The coastal attractions of Porirua were noted over a thousand years ago by New Zealand's earliest explorer, the famed Polynesian navigator, Kupe. In the 1820s, Maori tribe Ngāti Toa Rangatira, led by the famous Maori chief Te Raupara, became the latest indigenous settler to the area. Fleeing hardship and war in their former homeland, they found abundant food and shelter in the harbour and the surrounding bush-clad hills. From the late 1820s, Europeans began to settle in Porirua to farm, to fish and to trade. Porirua City is situated along the Wellington region's western shores with more than 54 kilometres of coastline, including an inlet and harbour. The harbour contains the largest estuary system in the lower North Island of New Zealand. Nationally significant for its history, beauty and ecological values, the harbour is important for recreational use and social enjoyment. There's a little saying with us and that is, you know, do everything right from the, the spirit of the moment at the beginning and all else will follow. And I think you've been doing great. We need more and better tracks because the problem up there is access, as you will find when you experience for the first time the gut buster. It's just beyond here. We started with nothing and now we have over 50,000 trees in the restoration area. Porirua has 50 kilometres of cycle and walk pathways, 40 kilometres of pathways for walkers only, 20,000 eco sourced plants. 53 sports fields, 35 public outdoor courts, 42 children's playgrounds, and four skate parks. Hello, Chicago. A revitalized city center is bringing the natural environment into the CBD. A system of rills will capture stormwater, thereby reducing pollution of the natural waterways. The New Zealand Archaeological Association maintains a register of archaeological sites and the council's role is to make sure that this information is disseminated out to people, particularly people who are looking at doing earthworks or building development. So this is Te Parakapo, it's quite a unique past site for both Porirua and the Wellington region. As you can see that it has cliffs around all three sides making it very strong and hard for any attackers to, to get inside. There's many things that make this area unique and, and one of the things is that it's got a lot of layers of history that go back to the very first times that people occupied Porirua. The city's heritage strategy identifies sites of more recent significance, including early European buildings and historical graves. The cottage was originally built in 1847. It's the oldest building on its original site that hasn't been moved. Basically, it's a partnership between ourselves, um, Porra City Council and the Historic Places Trust. The three of us are working together to restore it, basically, to save it. As our multicultural community has grown and diversified, so too have our arts and cultures, drawing on our heritage and exciting new influences. The city celebrates its cultural diversity through its local communities. World-class exhibitions at Pataka Museum of Arts and Cultures and a regular calendar of family-friendly indoor and outdoor events and activities. We can work together, that we can embrace and respect each other's cultures. And I think that's a tribute to everyone and all the communities concerned that live in Purirua. The environment is a fundamental consideration for businesses, organisations and individuals all across our city. Well here we are in our beautiful Porirua Harbour. This is the centrepiece of Porirua City. It's an environmental, social, cultural, economic resource for, for the city. This is, our, this is our gem. Basically we've seen over 150 years of, of slow degradation of the harbour. It's not that it's a, a cot case or anything, it's the fact that it, we're just throwing a numbers of challenges at it that it can do without. The City Council, with the support of a number of other agencies and the community as a whole, is looking to, to, to start to restore. 
More than 500,000 native trees have been planted in a unique project to return a 217 hectare offshore island to the way it was the day humans arrived. Oh, I'm Austin from the Porridge City Council. I'm just going around from house to house to see if anyone's got any dripping taps or leaking toilet systems. You've got to recycle things, they just can't throw them away, eh? It's good. Good for Pyro, good for the people. Somebody else's trash is somebody's treasure, and I mean, it's not going to landfill, so it's the Kiwi attitude, you know, do it yourself. But where we really lead the way is in the partnerships formed with the community, businesses and others to introduce and support best practice initiatives. The Porirua Way is about the people of Porirua working together, combining their passion for a strong and positive community and collaborating to make our city the best it can be. So all we have to offer is basically our labour and that's what we've done. And we've got that in Waitangirua. People think that we are so separated and so different, but really we're not. We've got different cultures, but we're enhancing those cultures. See this one here, this one here, this one here. One of the key things was um, extending our marine protection. We have managed to have extension to marine protection to 2014, and it's, it's just wonderful. But what has happened in the last 12 months is that the entrance way into Takabuya has improved dramatically, there's additional car parking, uh, the road is, looks really good and um, so we'd like to get that harbour looking beautiful. With a lot of effort and fundraising, our trust has now trained and given over 800 home computers to families comprising 1,100 adults and 3,100 children. Many of the parents have got jobs they would never have aspired to. The children are doing much better at school. At the last census in 2006, the ratio of computers in homes in Cannons Creek and Waitangaroo had lifted from 6% to between 25 and 32% and it'll be higher now. Community health has been a major focus in our city for more than 20 years. In 2000, a health needs assessment identified specific community health issues that required attention. In response, government and community agencies agreed to focus their efforts to make a difference. 14,000 people in Porirua uh, that are Pacific, we would probably look at out of that about 3,000 going on to four. <laughs> No violence, no fizzy drinks, smoke-free, alcohol-free, okay? We have youth programs and we provide volleyball and we also um, monitor everybody. We actually offer uh, free screening to all of these people because they are not going to the doctors. We try and catch them at these events. Three, two, one, yay! Parirua City Council directly provides public health programs such as diabetes prevention and hee healthy eating, healthy action. Thanks, <laughs> housing New Zealand has invested millions in the renewal of state housing community areas. Picking up rubbish. We've got, what, four yacht clubs within half mile out of each other. We're, we've got beaches, uh, we've got a two-hour trip to the Marlborough Sounds, the best sailing area in New Zealand, probably half of the world. There's great amenities now in Pairu with the indoor stadiums and the, and the, and the hockey facility, the all-weather hockey facility, and they're looking at you know more things in that nature. It's just, it's just a great place to be. Who'd want, not want to live here? Wellington Regional Public Health has agreed to provide fitness circuits for all ages within city parks. Investment in Tarapaha Arena supports the community's youth development and health objectives. All of our initiatives are underpinned by the city's community outcomes. This planning process integrates community involvement with the council to set the direction of the city. The community outcomes 
continue to underpin ongoing strategic development and prioritization for council decision-making.